Yes, yes. <laughs> Hit me to the bridge. To the peace bridge. Welcome to episode 1143 of Toronto Miked. Proudly brought to you by Great Lakes Brewery. Order online for free local home delivery in the GTA. StickerU.com. Create custom stickers, labels, tattoos, and decals. Palma Pasta. Fresh, homemade Italian pasta and entrees. The Yes, We Are Open podcast. A Moneris podcast production. The Advantaged Investor podcast from Raymond James, Canada. RecycleMyElectronics.ca Committing to our planet's future means properly recycling our electronics of the past. Ridley Funeral Home. Pillars of the community since 1921. Canna Cabana. The lowest prices on cannabis. Guaranteed. And Sammy Cohn Real Estate. Ask Sammy any real estate questions at sammy.cohn, K-O-H-N, at properly, properlyhomes.ca. Joining me today, making his Toronto Mike debut, is actor Tony Napo. Yes, yes, 1143. Tony, shot out of a cannon. Love it, buddy. <laughs> and you brought a dog here. Introduce us to your friend. Uh, this is Alfie. Elf. Elf. Uh, alien life form. Yep. Named after alien life form. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. He looks just like <laughs> fucking elf. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Can you swear it. on this? You can swear uh, like a sailor, if you will. I got nothing else to fucking say. I can't. <laughs> you were painting a boat today. I got so many questions for you. I was painting a house. Oh, I'm painting a house. Yeah, I'm a Canadian actor, so. So that's how you else. supplement your income. No, actually, I make I make good, I make a living, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I ran into a bunch of, let's just get into it right away. Let's I had go. a bunch of drug problems over the years, and uh, oh. I find it, uh, it's best to keep myself busy. Idle hands will find trouble, and, my, and that, that's why you don't drink. in powdered form, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, I don't drink either. So you don't drink? I do weed. Actually, I want to get that can of cannabis number off here. Cannacabana.com. <laughs> Listen, over 140 locations across the country. They're great oh. people there. They won't be undersold on cannabis or cannabis already. accessories. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. Okay, yep. so you're not taking any beer home with you? Nope. Is it okay if I drink or is you that, can is drink that rude? You drink you want. You can get drunk if you want. Okay, I'm going to get hammered with you. Okay, so I'm cra- I'm just going to let the uh, listenership know I'm cracking open okay. a uh, burst. This is an IPA, a New England IPA from Great Lakes Brewery. Tony's not allowed to have any. I'm drinking a Monster Energy drink. A keg hey. of it. A keg of it. Cheers. Salud. Good to meet you. I love the Stanley Kubrick. Uh, Thank you, sir. Clockwork Orange T-shirt you got on there. Stanley gave it to me himself. <laughs> it's, uh, during the filming of Eyes Wide Shut, when That's you were right. an extra. Yeah. I well, recognized you. I worked my you. balls off on that film, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I recognized you from those orgy Thank scenes. Thank you so much. What's an orgy? That's a famous Stu Stone line, by the way. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to him later. Okay. He knows. With uh, Cynthia knows. Dale, did you ever see this film? Uh, anyway, we'll get to that later. <laughs> how was the traffic? How was the traffic? Awful, awful. I don't know why you're in Etobicoke. You deserve a. Well, where are you, you coming from? I actually today I was coming from uh, Bayview and uh, Merton, where I've spent the last month painting a gigantic fucking house with twenty foot ceilings on the top floor across the board, um, and it was all dark colors, and now it's all white. So three coats everywhere. So instead of like coming at it with that attitude, like what are you doing in South Etobicoke? What are you doing up there? Like, be, <laughs> you know what I mean? By the lake is where it's at. Yeah, well, fair enough. Do you got fog? I mean, it's like really this? nice out here, actually. <laughs> Do you have any fog up there? Like, like here, it's like right now, it's like no, it uh, dissipates by the time it gets there. It's wild. This <laughs> waterfront fog we got right now, it's wild. Okay, so you weren't painting a boat, so I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I but here, know. I have a question. So I, I offered you some craft beer, and you said. No, now I know why, because you're, you're in recovery, essentially. Right? Yeah, I mean, I've been in, re- I went to rehab in 2000, so that's 22 years yeah, ago. But- and I've had stretches of sobriety, stretches of not, you know, it's part How of- long is this current stretch? I'm going on two years now. Okay. And, and well, when I say sobriety, I still do weed and I still do mushrooms and edibles and whatever. Okay, so you'll still go to Can of Cabana. Yeah. Okay, like good to know. Shit that uh, debilitates me or gets in the way of doing my job or my life or whatever else. 
I stay away from them. Good for you. But you put a note in the, the text, uh, no water. Like, was that a joke? I don't or? drink water. Like, so <laughs> tell me, like, you don't, you don't ever just have a glass of water? Rarely. I know you're supposed to drink eight glasses a day. I think I drink maybe eight glasses a year. And every time I do, I'm like, this stuff is fucking good, you know? Yeah. But then I forget. And, and it's plentiful and it's good for you and it comes out of the you tap. You get it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but you'd rather have a uh, Monster, Monster Energy. Red Bull. Coca Cola. <laughs> I'm I'm going through a big root beer float stage right now, okay. which feels like a a health drink to me. Okay, man, I got oh, so many questions, but I'm gonna just read a note I got from another FOTM. So, uh, Tony, I know you don't know what FOTM means. I'm gonna tell you, Fuck. friend of Toronto Mike. Oh, okay, okay, you're now an FOTM. Nice. Welcome I, to the club. You, I really like you already from the first <laughs> moment I met you. Is that right? Yeah, okay. I, I think that could change in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, let me know at the end of the sh- if you, how you feel because okay. we got to take our photo together you got inside, it. and okay. people can see the fog and shit. But I got a note right away <laughs> from another FOTM, yeah. Jeff Merrick. Oh, I love Jeff. He says best. This is about you, by the way. He's not okay. talking about himself. Okay. Best guy in the world. Wow. Nobody has made me laugh harder <laughs> than Tony ever. <laughs> How do you I, know, Jeff? We played on the same hockey team, Sergeant Rock, uh, for years. I don't know how many. And uh, George Bell Arena? George Bell Arena. I know yeah. it well. Uh, a lot of arenas. Uh, McCormick. Uh, I, I refereed kids hockey, too, for a few years. Uh, so I know all the rinks. But, um, uh, you know, I could I made him laugh a lot. But, I, you know, I had the advantage of being naked with him before the games and after the games. So. How does he measure up? Uh, naked? <laughs> I mean... I wouldn't, if I went that way, I'd go that way. If you know wow. What I'm wow. Yeah, okay. Sure. That's, that's sure. a big, uh, big and there's tattoos there. all around it. So if you get bored, you get stuff to look at. <laughs> like a target. <laughs> 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 all right. So I have another guy you probably played hockey with yep. and he's a good friend of mine. Now we've become pretty tight, but he <laughs> sent in a recorded message. Oh, Are no. you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. High tech. Shit. Tony Napo. It's Dean McDermott. Hey, Dino. You beautiful hunk of Italian. Love you. Nice. <laughs> uh, I just want to send you my love, man. I can't wait to see Vandits. Uh, um, I'm buddy. sure you're fucking amazing in it, as you are in everything. Um, have fun with Mr. Mike there. And uh, Stu the Jew. <laughs> you better put me in your next movie, man, because uh, they look fucking great. I don't and, think you can uh, call him Stu the Jew anymore, movie, can you? So I want to come along. It's very for fucking ride. Kanye. Uh, and Anyway, hey, I love you guys. Have a great show with Mike. (laughs) And uh, I love you guys. Uh, Be well. And uh, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. (laughs) Okay, so... Stu the Jew. Okay, so I gotta... Who is that, Kanye? I gotta give that a little context, okay? (laughs) Because if you hear it like that, I know what you're saying. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. uh, Dean goes back, like, before the Jamie Kennedy... Yeah. So I know, I know. Yeah, before the Jamie Kennedy stuff... Yeah. Dean knew Stu from uh, L.A. Right. when uh, his handle as a rapper was Stu the Jew. I know, I know. I know. So it's, I feel like it's uh, got to soften it for poor Dean. Here. Listen, I'll tell you a great Dean story. Tell me. I love the Dean uh, story. Dean, when his dad died, he decided he was going to have a skate wake for his father. Okay. So, and Dean uh, loves hockey. He's on the ice still like eight fucking days a week. <laughs> yep. And uh, so, he says, so he has his skate, uh, like a pickup game in honor of his dad. So I figure... Okay. I'm going to make him laugh. I hadn't seen him on, for a while at this point. I think, I think, no, this, that wasn't, it might have been for his reality show too, but I forget. So I walk in the dressing room. I decide to put my hockey bag over one shoulder, my stick in my hand, and, uh, and I take my dick out of my jeans and let it hang like down and walk in the dressing room. And I go, uh, hey, is this Dean Skate? <laughs> and I look down the fucking row and there's nobody I know there. Not a single guy. And then I'm like, oh, fuck. Don't tell me I go in the wrong room. And then I, I keep looking around and I finally catch Dean in the corner laughing his ass off at how fucking embarrassed I am because I'm standing there with my dick literally hanging out of my pants. Uh, so that's that's, a, so, that's so one you, of many Dean okay, stories. I, I love the Deans. Dean's actually on Toronto Mike next Monday. So, uh, oh, great. He's I see him every time I go to L.A. He sees me every time he comes here. So he's going to come on with his ex-wife. Do you know his ex-wife? Uh, I met her. Yeah. Okay, so Mary Jo Eustace is joining. I don't know her, but I met her. Okay, they're going to come on together, which should be kind of interesting. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that. I, I saw recently that 
They were speaking. I mean, I don't know anything about their relationship. Dude, I know so much about this, but I don't know how much to disclose because I've been working on this secret project okay. that's going to drop like soon. I, but I won't speak to it or about her because <laughs> no. I don't really know her at all. They Well, they've patched things up and uh, okay. they're putting together a podcast about like exes getting along after the divorce. <laughs> like I could be a guest like 12 times. Uh, how many times have <laughs> you been married? i only been married officially once. One time legally, yeah. okay. I'm okay. a great ex. I'm a shitty partner. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Uh, how long were you married for? Uh, about six and a half, just shy of seven years. Okay. And we're together, buddy. We're still good friends. I have the key to her house. Her kid knows my kid. I okay. always tell them, if I wasn't such a shitty husband, neither of you would be born. Did your uh, substance abuse get in the way of uh, being a good husband? Yeah, like coming home and shit. <laughs> like you'd go and you just disappear for I just uh, wouldn't come home. I mean oh, it's, it's 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 I can laugh at it now but it sure. was it was terrible, no, serious, you know. Yeah. My wife never knew what I was. There were there were no cell phones then. So I just didn't show up. She didn't know where I was. Did that too many times and uh you know, rightfully she left. But you have a kid. I got a kid not with her though. I got right, a kid with, with someone else. else. Okay. Okay. Okay, how old's your kid? Almost 18. 18 on November 19. Okay. I, I got I got an 18 year old too. Oh, okay. A girl or so, boy? A girl. Yeah. It's I pretty a, great. So is your that means a grade like first year university or Ella Ray, no, she's a she's a badass like her dad. So she uh, <laughs> she dropped out of two different schools in grade 9. Okay. Uh, but she's doing great now, you know. Okay. She sort of she had puberty early like she was, you know, uh, developed physically beyond her years early on and uh and so with those hormones came all the rebellion and shit, and she got that out of the way pretty early. Is she going to follow in her dad's uh, footsteps and try this acting thing? I don't thing? know. I don't know. I don't know where she'll land. I keep telling her, don't fucking worry about it. Like, just enjoy your age now because life gets fucking harder and harder and harder. Yeah, as 18 you so young. Okay, so, I mean, we got to talk stew in a minute here, and uh, the yeah. FOTMs are waiting to talk a little stew, but... Okay. Like, when did you realize you wanted to be an actor? When does that uh, bug It's a great little story, and I'll try to make it brief. I was at I'll U take of your T. time, man. You're here all night. So. Okay. Is it, how long is this fucking night? It's as long as you want. Like, there's okay. no rules. If I feel it's an hour, it's an hour. But if it, we go longer, I don't care. Okay. Like, I can go longer than an hour. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm at University of Toronto in Scarborough. I'm going to be an English teacher because mm. my English teacher at Winston Churchill Collegiate in high school, Don Fisello, was fucking great. He opened the world up to me, taught me how to appreciate reading and literature and understand it. And uh, so I'm doing that. I'm an English major, but I'm, uh, I'm taking drama as a minor because I figure it'll be easy and I'll meet a lot of women. And it was, and I did. Uh, but <laughs> while I was there, I've told the story a couple of times. Kathy Smith okay. was a TA there, and she called me into her office one day. She said, what are you going to do with your life? I said, I'm going to be a teacher. She said, what about acting? I said, I really like it. It's fun. She said, I'm going to tell you something I've only ever told one other person. If you study this properly, and she recommended I go to a school in New York okay. because of my sensibilities, quote unquote, mm -hmm. uh, I think you could make a living doing this for the rest of your life. She said, I only ever told one other guy. So I called that one other guy. I had a conversation with him, and I decided, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop out of university, which, you know, for somebody who grew up below the poverty line, education is your way out. So I told my parents, you know what, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to become an actor, which is what every set of parents wants to hear. <laughs> so I do. Uh, and, and the guy, the yeah. interesting part of that story. Well, I was going to ask, who is this guy? Enrico Colantoni, who's okay. actually also in this film. Wow, bandits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's the long and short of it. Wow. Those two conversations changed the pass path of my life. Probably would have come to it some other way. I think it was a thing I secretly always wanted to do. But growing up where I grew up and who I am, it was like, who the fuck are you to be an actor? And you went to New York. I dropped everything. I, I never had flown on a plane even. That's my dog's <laughs> tail making that noise. Get the fuck out of there. Um, it's Alfie. I put all my stuff in a hockey bag. I got on a train and I went to New York. Wow. I stayed at the YMCA for a, a couple of weeks, found some friends, found a place. and The rest is the rest. It's like I was checking out your IMDb page. Lengthy, like lots of uh, credits. Yeah, uh, like, uh, oh, oh, closing on two hundred credits. Wow. Now. Yeah. Okay. Prolific. Yeah. Prolific. Yeah. Well, but you know, when I book a job, uh, 
You know, if Dean books a job, it lasts three seasons. If I book a job, it lasts three fucking days. So. He's on a bit of a, a losing streak. Uh, ah. I, <laughs> I get updates, but uh, you book you book a lot of jobs. Every actor anyway. complains. You know, right. no matter... Hugh Dillon says, you want to hear an actor complain, give him a job. <laughs> uh, but everybody complains. You always want to be doing more. But uh, Dean's a hell of an actor, and, you know... Uh, It'll, it'll come back around for him. Who, who's the better? Oh, we'll get back to acting, but who's the better hockey player, Dean McDermott or Jeff Merrick? Oh, that's a, that's, you know, you're going to start a war there. Uh, uh, well, they're both good. You know, Jeff's, Jeff's solid and, and Dean's solid. Uh, they're, are, they're, 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 they're uh, comparable. Are there any other like famous people that play in these, these leagues or whatever that you want to name check right now? Well, like, uh, I mean, this whole league was mostly actors and comedians and musicians and stuff. Dave gotta, Bedini. Okay, Dave Bedini. Was, was this the He'll gym? hack the shit out of you in front of the net. I talked to Jim Cuddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the woodshed. Yeah. And we talked about Bedini, and yep. he said just as much, yeah. Everyone will say the same thing, but the best fucking guy, like the nicest guy on the planet, Who? Dave Bedini. Okay, yeah. But oh, in yeah, front of that a couple net, times. he will fucking destroy you. <laughs> He'll destroy you. You know, uh, he did write the uh, the Ballad of uh, Wendell Clark, parts yeah. one and two. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, who else was there? I mean, yeah, there's a I lot love of hearing this there. stuff. Like, you know, so you got, like, think about it. What Jeff Merrick is on Hockey Night in Canada now. There's yeah, Tony yeah. Napos and he fucking Bandits. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll get to that. Uh, we got, um, you just name dropped uh, uh, Jim Cuddy. Gord is Downey, a, I'm seeing your tragically hip thing there. Gord Downey, I never played with Gord, but uh, I, I. Goaltender, right? Uh, he was a goaltender. I had a the the what is it the long the long end of the rink or the far end of the rink the lonely end of the, the rink. lonely end of the rink. He uh, I met him once and he told me a great story, which was when they were on Saturday Night Live. I tried to think of uh, I only met him at a we were reading a script. He was a pretty good actor too. I have to say, if you ever saw uh, one week, he was I quite, saw, you quite saw good it. in that. Yeah, Joshua Jackson or uh, that's right, right, Joshua whatever. His I think name it was, was Jackson. I think that sounds right. A bunch of Dawson's people I knew. Creek guy. Gabe Hogan was in that. James Spidell. Uh, M. Griner's in that. Okay, I don't know who that person. He's a singer. I know. Who, I know. I mean, I don't Joel know. Joel Plaskett. I don't in know that, him maybe? personally. Joel Plaskett. You know this? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Experience, right? Uh, yeah, the Joel Plas. The, uh, emergency. Oh, Emergency. Yeah, yeah. Joel. Who's Plaskett. the Experience? Somebody else. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what the fuck was I saying? You oh, were, so Gord Downey Gord's says a good actor. they're on Saturday Night Live, and I remember. Yeah. They didn't play their hits. They played two they, songs from right. their new album at right. the time. Right. And one was Grace 2. Right. It was the first one they sang. And he said his nephew at the time mm -hmm. had said, could you somehow say happy birthday to me? And he said, no, I don't think I can. But what I'll do is, because he was turning 11, he would hold up his two fingers to make the 11. Hey. And when he did that, he sang the first line of the song going, instead of, they say you're fabulously rich or whatever. Yep. He said, you say we're tragically hip. So he fucked up the line. And you see his face go, what the fuck did I just say? And he said, I spent the whole time trying to recover from that moment. And you can you can see that on YouTube and Dude, see the look on his face. I had Jake Gold here who manages managed the hip at that time. Okay. Manages him now. And I played that clip and we talked about it. Yeah, okay. it was just nerves, I guess. Uh, he, yes. he fudged the first line of uh, Grace uh, 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was and, still amazing, and it's a great story. And it, it's a great story. And that is one of the great, like, debates. Like, why aren't they doing, I don't know, uh, New Orleans is sinking. At the time, I would have thought they would have went with... Go with the hits, because you're talking yeah. to the States now. For the first time, really. We already love you. Yeah. Right? Okay. But that's an artist, right? He's like, yeah. fuck that. I'm going to do I'm gonna do what I'm doing now. And do you know the uh, the host who introduced them? Dan Aykroyd, of you course. Buddy, Kingston, of course. the boy. Yeah. Have you ever worked with Dan? I never, I've never worked with him or met him. Never met Dan. He held the door for me once at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Dan Aykroyd story. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Yeah, good story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, man, I'm going to do this now, and then we're going to go back. Okay. So it's going to be like a Tarantino film. We're going to okay. jump around. But okay. I promised my dear friend, Stu Stone, okay. we'd do this right. So okay. you're in Vandits. Yes. I got questions about Vanitz, but before I ask them, yeah. I need to tell the universe that there's a premiere. Like, are you going to the tomorrow premiere night, of Vanitz yeah. tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Okay, yeah. that's at Scotiabank Theater. Eight o'clock. Tony Napple's going to be there tomorrow at eight o'clock. Rob Wells, too. Nobody Trailer gives a Park fuck Boys. that I'm going to be there. <laughs> well, you're in my basement right now. Yeah. So I give a fuck that you're going to be there, okay? <laughs> but then are I you going to be there? I'm going to be there, yeah. I'll get out of here. Okay, so you so do give I'll a give fuck. you a big kiss there. Right. I do give a fuck. For a week, I think it gets a week in theaters, and we yeah. want us people to buy tickets. So, 
go to cineplex.com slash movie slash bandits or Google fucking bandits tickets. You'll find it. But go to, so at cineplex.com slash movie slash bandits. That's, that box, by the way, will be full before you leave. You are not, and mine. that's for you too. That's from sticker you, okay. sticker you dot com. I love it. You're taking home the Toronto Mike sticker. And this box. Book too or no? Uh, no, I wanted to show that to you because, uh, well, Mark Weisblatt, but I got it. Yeah, you're, it's, okay. it's okay. It's not a TV show. I'll fix that okay. camera in a minute. Yep. All right, let me do the Vandis thing first, which is that FOTMs in Toronto. And there's other cities that have this too, but let's just focus on Toronto. This is Toronto Mike. Scotiabank Theater is airing a Stu Stone movie for a week. And you can buy tickets, support Stu Stone, who's been on this program approximately 90 times. <laughs> no joke. And he comes on once a month for Toast. He was here every week during the pandemic for Pandemic Fridays. We love Stu. Let's support him. Buy a ticket to Vandit's. First question for you, Tony. Yeah. Is that a true story about the van getting stolen? Yeah, it is. Okay, because Stu does gimmicks and shtick. He's a bullshitter, yeah. So when it happened, like, I, me and Cam Gordon had a little private chat, and we said, like... Is it real? I mean, we weren't sure, but you come here. I trust you, man. No, Tell it me. was real. It actually absolutely was real. And, uh, and they did recover the stuff eventually, but we shot the film on completely borrowed or donated equipment. It was stolen the night before we started. Yeah, that's the story. And they got a lot of coverage, that story. It but did. nobody they, ever did any real fact-checking, you know? They just kind of trusted... <laughs> well, the police uh, did, for fuck's sake. Well, yeah. yeah but, you know, <laughs> I, always, like, I mean, who's your research <laughs> department? Nobody? <laughs> like, well, when I saw the CBC, did they talk to the cops? Or they just took these two, uh, two, wow. two guys? But I trust you. So this happened. Yeah. And uh, they, you got it done anyway. Like, what did you do? You just, like, uh, borrowed? I know he well, said... it's a low-budget film to begin with. So how much fucking equipment iPhones? do you have? You know? iPhone? <laughs> yeah, basically. You know, we needed a... We got a couple of lights, and we got a couple of... Whatever the fuck we You did. got it done. Yeah, you got, we it, got done. it done. So, okay, so I'm going to come back to Bandits, but it's to set up Bandits, I actually need to talk about another movie, and I pulled a clip here. So yeah, let's yeah. listen. Okay. I got to make sure I play the right fucking one. Here we go. Jesus Christ! What the fuck did you do that for? Oh, that hurt. That fucking hurt. You've been stabbed in the fucking back no, before. No, that no. fucking hurts. No. Yeah. Oscar, Oscar. You saying you need a victim? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> what do we got here? What's this then? Need a moment of truth, is it? Okay. Kiss my grits. Oh. 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 You cry again, little fucking baby. I'm gonna go home. What are you gonna do? Okay? What are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? Huh? <laughs> okay. That's Faking a Murderer. Right. That's the movie that uh, Adam Rodness and Stu Stone put together before Bandits, yeah. like the most recent. And is that the first movie of Stu's you ever appeared in? Yes. I actually met Stu, and uh, he sort of uh, had to vet me before he cast me. And... Uh, I was like, just fucking cast me. What's your problem? <laughs> and he like, did. He, he, like, okay, so he, like, did he pull you out of a catalog? Like, how the hell? No, did no, no. Adam and I had done a film years oh, okay. ago. And, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of like City Pulse. I'm just everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. if you're paying attention, if you watch Canadian TV or movies, yeah. you're going to fucking see well, me. See, that's it. Once I saw Faking a Murderer and I learned you, you, pl you play the, the killer guy, like you have a big juicy fucking role in that thing. And, it's, and then I start seeing you pop up everywhere. I'm going to yeah. get to a story about my six-year-old and my six-year-old oh, daughter. Oh, I man. know where that's going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my six-year-old daughter is watching the show. And I'm, I'll get to it in a minute, but let's finish this up yep. with the Stu Stone, Adam Rodness universe. What's, do you remember what's the name of the thing where you met uh, yeah, Shark, Adam? Shark City. Shark City. Yeah. Okay. Not a great film, but, uh, but, a, but a great experience. And what did Adam do on that? Uh, we were we uh, were actors. I think uh, I shot him. I think I shot him in the leg or some fucking thing. See, I don't know Adam that well. Okay, okay. Adam's so. a good guy. Okay, uh, you just got to get past his matching <laughs> track suits. <laughs> I did. But I'll tell you this. Yeah. Let me say this before I forget. Yeah. You know, for years, 
I'm a I'm a good actor. I'm a really good actor now. Yeah. I, I started out I was okay, but I gotten better and better over the years. And sure. Do a lot of stage. Do a lot of everything. And I, all the, my whole career, I've been saying, "Fuck, where's my Scorsese?" You know, because I got a De Niro hero worship thing. Yeah. Um, Who doesn't? And uh, and I kept thinking, oh, maybe it's this guy, maybe it's that guy. But it's these two guys. These two guys are my Scorsese. They don't fucking audition me. They just say, we're doing this. We want you to do that. We want Apple. Figure it out. And I do. Because you were so good in thinking. With murder. them, I don't mean I don't mean I yeah. don't mean to rob them of any credit, but it's very collaborative and it, and there's a, a real trust between us, all three of us. And uh and uh, these guys make good films and they write good scripts and I'm I'm a fan of theirs. So you were great in faking a murderer? Yeah. I actually didn't like. I was intimidated by your fame, so I saw you at the premiere <laughs> for Fake and a Murderer, but I didn't. Were you there in you. LA? I was. Get no, no, here. no. The Toronto one. Oh, at uh, recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, yeah, the the one that was recently. Yeah, done recently. So yeah. I was there. I saw you there, and it was great to see you there. Fake Fake and a Murderer was fun. That was on uh, Hollywood Suites, everybody. Yep. And Bandits will be on Hollywood Suites too, but right. we we got this limited theatrical run. Yeah. So buy That's, your tickets. I think they they have to run it in a week to not be to qualify for awards. I believe. So Bandits is going to be up for some uh, Canadian Screen Awards. Yeah, pos- potentially. I okay. mean, it'll qualify. Okay, this is all very exciting to me, uh, Tony. I'm very happy you're here. So, me too. Uh, you do faking a murderer, and you got paid money for that. Like they had a budget and everything. They said, "Hey, Tony, here's some money." It was like twenty bucks, but still. <laughs> um, okay, but there's you know the scene all the of the beer, beer I drank can? in that movie. I wasn't sober water, then. Right? No, it was oh. all beer. Okay, because you know what you were drinking? Great Lakes beer. Oh, it was I, really I good. Stew up with the beer. Okay, so all those cans were like. Uh, I like, drank a lot of. Does it. Does this bring back any memories, Tony? <laughs> kind of the Canuck Pale Ale. So kinda. yeah, it's all, all the blur. cans of beer in faking a murder were Great Lakes beer. That's no joke. And you know what else for? that movie uh, i don't know if i should say it but yeah, i'll say, say it, it anyway it. uh when we shot uh you know the stuff for the youtube channel f- in that movie yeah the, of course the crazy fucking sunglasses <laughs> yeah psycho stuff uh we just shot that in uh i think it was adam's garage like we faked it we shot it ahead of time and uh i was like just have a just have a full bottle of vodka there and i went there and drank like half the bottle mm. of vodka and then said, uh, just turn the cameras on, and we f- just fucking went. Okay, well, you, why did you hesitate to tell that story? Uh, uh, because I might have left some shit out. <laughs> <laughs> will you give me, after we stop recording, will you give me that stuff? Yeah, I'm yeah. The, yeah. The stuff. Okay. okay, so faking a murderer, you're in that, and then when the guys are going to make their next movie, again, uh, Hollywood Suites helps to finance this, and then I don't know, they get financing from wherever, and then they're like, you know, Tony, we have another 20 bucks. Yeah. They did, you know, no audition required. They're like, we want Napo. Well, in this for film. this one, I mean, God love these guys and God love Hollywood sweet. And whoever else said he can play the lead of this film sight oh. unseen. Like that's, that doesn't happen. We to got me. 200 credits on the uh, IMDB and they I just, know, but they I've, just never, I've never, I've never been a number one. I've never, I've never proven that I can carry a movie. I've done mm-hmm. a lot of, uh, recurring stuff on TV, and I, I'm even like playing my first regular role on a TV show. I recurred in, you know, probably 10, 12 shows, including Bad Blood. Um, but I've never been a number one, so okay, it's a bit of a risk they're taking. They, they, they could have offered that to a name. Uh, and I'm, I might be a semi name in the industry, but nobody. Dean McDermott should have got that role. <laughs> you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a name. That's he's a legit name people pissed. know. So he did say it. I think we were talking over it. But uh, he, he told me before he recorded that, which is obviously on the record because he knows I'm going to play it tonight. Right. But he was telling me like, he was legit pissed. Like, he wants to be in these Stu Stone movies. Sure. Like, where where is his role in fucking Bandits? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I mean, you know, they were, they were, with the money that they had left, uh, I don't know if he told you this, Stu, but fuck him. I'll tell you. <laughs> tell me. Uh they were chasing some other bigger names to play some of those parts, but they wanted like 80,000, a hundred thousand, like crazy money. So I said, mm-hmm. you know, let me, let me make a couple of calls. And I, uh, I called Enrico, Enrico and I were just doing a short film and, and I mentioned it to him and, and uh, <coughs> when it came down to it, I was like, and I told Stu and these guys, I don't even care if you pay these people more than me, just get them in the movie. I don't know how that worked out, but, uh, but Enrico had the time in his schedule, so he came and joined us. In, in Winnipeg, right? In Winnipeg. Wow. Rob Wells, I had worked with on a film called Beatdown maybe 15-ish years ago, maybe 10, 12, and had a good time with him. 
But you know, and Rob, you know, is a he's a shy and pretty private guy, and mm-hmm. and the Trailer Park Boys is ninety seven percent of what he's done, <laughs> right. and that's his comfort zone. So when he steps outside of it, I don't think he sees himself as an actor, actor, you know. But but I do, and uh, I was like, Rob, you should come out and play with these guys, and 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 Rico too. I was like, these guys are going to make a lot more movies. They're really fucking up and comers, and. Uh, I think it's a good idea to get in with them here, and uh, and they both uh, they both came in. And I also had said yeah. I had read for Jan Arden's TV show for two different parts. It was down to me and one other guy, and I didn't get either. But I spent some time with her then. I had met her one time previously. She didn't know who the fuck I was, but <laughs> I was like, I oh, think Jan would be fucking killer in this yeah. role if you can get her. So, so I helped. I helped, even though I'm not a name. Like you know, for the. For the publicity, I'm doing you and I think Breakfast TV. Everyone else wants to interview those guys. And I'm like, whatever gets people to the fucking <laughs> Can I tell movie. you a fun story about that? So, yeah. Stu, you know, he's here once a month. So we're talking about how... It's like I- your period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, you know, in Faking a Murder, he's got that bloody sluggish shirt. Oh, yeah. So it all fits in remember there. But when I licked his, inside his mouth? <laughs> I remember all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on Hollywood Sweets. And then I went... And then I saw it again on the big screen when they had that, that premiere... Uh, whatever that was a couple months ago. But okay. okay. So, uh, we're like, what can you do? And I said, well, we need, we need somebody local who can come over. And I said, get me Tony Napo. And he gave me your number. We texted. I said, let's get Tony on before the premiere. Great. So you're here like the night before the premiere. What great timing. And then we, uh, he said, Stu said, I'll, I'll get the PR person for the movie in touch with you. We'll get Jan Arden on before the, uh, on demand. I guess it goes on okay. demand in December. Sure. So, like, late November, Jan Arden comes on Toronto Mike. So, I'm like, oh, that's great, because I want to talk to Jan about other shit, too, right? She's awesome. She's I fucking heard. awesome. I heard she's she's like, such a cool, down-to-earth, yeah. grounded But, person. so I chat up the PR person. And it's like, okay, we're going to get Jan on the show. It's going to be late November. And I'm, like, psyched about it. I'm like, that's great. Uh, here's some possible dates, times. Let's do it. And then I tweeted... <laughs> coming soon to Toronto Mike, Jan Arden. Right. Because after this conversation with the PR person, it sounded like it was a done deal. Right. And then at some, a lot of people excited about this, by the way. A lot of nice comments like, oh, I can't wait for this. It's going to be great. And then Jan replies, <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I can't remember what she wrote. Something like, who the fuck are what you? is this? <laughs> what is this? Or something. And I realized like, okay, she's got no fucking clue what I'm talking about. Right. For all she knows, I made this shit up. Like I just invented this. Like that's my move or sure. whatever. Sure. And she, I clearly, she doesn't know who Toronto Mike is, even though I'm like, look, Chuck D's been on the fucking program. Okay? Is that right? Yeah. That's fucking Chuck cool. D, Chuck D, and Tony Napo. It's quite a quite a uh, list. Good uh, company. And Jeff Merrick, okay. Uh, and next week, Dean McDermott. Okay, so uh, anyway, she seems to not know. And then I wrote the lady back, and she's like, "Yeah, I, I'm gonna we're gonna shore this up when she's back from vacation." Right. So Jan's probably still oblivious, but as far <laughs> as I know, Jan is coming on Toronto Mike. She's in awesome. Late November. I can't. And wait. she won't be there tomorrow because she's doing a private concert or something. <sighs> Isn't she, she's Calgary based, right? Where is I she? I think so. Yeah, she's out. I believe yeah, so. She's uh, west. Okay, so you got in good with the what I call the Canada's Cohen brothers, the uh, Adam <laughs> Adam Rodness right. and Stu Stone. Right. And if they make a movie after Bandits, which they will, I hope it stars uh, Tony Napo. Oh, I think you know I'm with those guys for life. I don't know if I'll star in everything, uh, but uh, but I'll be I'll be anytime they call my name, I'll, I'll I'll or anytime they tap my shoulder, I'll jump on the ice. And that name Napo. Italian, right? You're fucking cool, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, Napo, like Napoli. My father is from a town near Naples, and my mom's a, my mom just passed actually. Uh, uh, my, listen, my condolences. Thank you so much. It was sudden and quick, and the best death uh. it could have been. Um, and uh, uh, so I'm half Italian, half British on my mom's side, actually. Okay. Which uh, uh, an actress, the the woman whose house I just painted, Kara yeah. Pifko, okay. and and her brother Andrew are both actors in L.A., and their father's home is what I just painted for them. And uh, Kara Pifko years ago said to me, uh, I said, you know, I'm only half Italian, I'm half English, and she goes, oh, that makes complete sense because you're a perfect gentleman and a fucking pig at the exact same time. <laughs> That's great. She said it nicely. She said it nicely. Uh, the reason I wanted to know if you're of Italian descent is because you're going to know when you when you you sink your teeth into the palm of pasta I'm looking lasagna. at this. So that yeah. box, I got it in my freezer. It's okay. a frozen uh, large lasagna okay. from palm of pasta. The Petrucci family is going to be dying to know what Tony Napo oh. thought of their lasagna, man. So you got to report say, back. How do you say that name again? Petrucci. 
Petrucci family. Okay, great. I spoke to Anthony today because you're uh, fucking great at slipping the sponsors in. I'll tell you that it's seamless. We're just warming up here, bro. <laughs> Anthony Petrucci phoned Anthony, me today because he, had, he just finished a uh, you sports fan. Oh, I guess you play hockey. You sports fan. You know what? Honestly, I never watch fucking okay, any okay. sports anymore. Well, just let the FOTMs know that uh, Anthony yeah. Petrucci loved the Steve Simmons episode, so he wanted to phone me up and say it was he. I did a great job with well, Steve. I love Simmons. Anthony. I don't care what anyone <laughs> says. Four locations, uh, three in Mississauga, one in uh, Oakville. Okay, I got to play the trailer. What's wrong with Toronto, Anthony? I know. Anthony, get a location in Toronto here. Put one on 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 my corner. Put one on my corner downtown. (laughs) I forgot the playlist. Okay, this is actually the Vandit's uh, trailer, but let's listen to it. Okay. It was the night before. Are people only listening? No, they can hear us, unless you want me to meet you. What's that? Do they see anything? They see you. They're not seeing a clip, though. No. Have an eggnog or Listen two. To a fucking clip. Enjoy while you can, whatever you choose. Because on this holy night, all hell will break loose. <laughs> it seems like something's going to go wrong here. $25,000, here we come. And then we get the Lambos, then we get those Lambos. How do you even know the money's here? Of course the money's here. They keep it in the money room in the back. Great trailer. Hey! Officer, I love your mustache. Stop. Oh, shoot. I gotta touch it. Okay! <laughs> Duck! Very visual trailer. Perfect for, <laughs> perfect for a podcast, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just imagine, two lines of uh, dialogue for fuck's sake. I know. Imagine the fun and fr- frivolity. Let me say this about this movie too before I forget. People. Go ahead. Um, so the so the script as it as it was written originally is uh, I'm kind of a you know kind of a dirtbag shithead who uh, owes twenty five grand to. Somebody. And you're also an actor. <laughs> In the movie, Mike. In the movie, uh, but it's never named. Uh, why I owe money. Okay. I had just got that. That was, I think the second film I'd done with these new teeth. These are all implants. Look. Okay. Cause they look perfect. The bottom is one piece. Okay. Top they did, is they one did, piece. They did, it was worth every penny. It, it was actually my buddy, uh, Alex Trius in, uh, in, uh, New Jersey did it. Uh, oh. I forget Montclair dental, something, something. Okay. Um, I'm not so good with program? the sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, I still had trouble speaking. Mm. And so I said to Stu and Adam, also, I was thinking, this guy's kind of a piece of shit and pathetic. Yeah. But I want the audience to like him a bit too, right? So at the time, because I couldn't really speak that well, I said, you know, why don't I just lean into this? Ah. And so I'll look. So all my dialogue is like a tough guy saying, we're going to fucking go there. The money's in the back. We're going to get it. But then it comes out. Oh, I forgot the dog was here. <laughs> I forgot the fucking dog was here. Yeah. I almost jumped out of my skin. I taught him how to lick my balls, okay. so I apologize. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I'm, I'm listening to your story. I completely forgot this dog was here. And this big brown furry head pops up between my legs, yeah, yeah. my crotch. You're welcome. I almost had a, I had a, you keep going, I almost had a fucking heart attack. Uh, I completely forgot. Are you okay? Do you need mouth to mouth or anything, <laughs> no, anything to lick, mouth? Don't lick the inside of my mouth. Okay, okay. sorry. You got the, yeah. The, so I said, into it. why don't we do this? And then, and it's so it really works without giving anything away. I think that this guy doesn't come off as a... Yeah. A piece of shit so much mm. as sort of an endearingly pathetic loser nice. who's just, you know, he fixed his teeth in, a, in an attempt to be less of a loser. And um, and now he's got to get himself out of that hole. And so the whole movie, I'm sort of speaking like this. So nice. it's a uh, it's it's a bit of a. It's a bit of a trick and a bit of a cheat and a bit of an actor thing, but but it works. I think it really well, I'll works. I'll let you know tomorrow night if it worked. Okay, oh, I haven't you haven't seen, seen it yet. Okay. I'm seeing it tomorrow night, so I'll let you know. Great. Quick fun fact because we're on the pirate stream live.torontomike.com, and the VP of Sales is there, and he points out uh, Kara Pifko. That's the name of the. Yeah. Uh, okay, she was on Better Call Saul. He that's right. To, uh, that's right. She's a, she's great on that show. Wow. I met her on a show called This Is Wonderland. Uh, George F. Walker wrote it. 
a lot of Toronto talent. It's uh, it's on fucking Tubi or some fucking thing now. Yeah, there's um, there's so many. Like, how do you keep track of where the hell you are? Like, how do I you don't. tell loved ones? I honestly <laughs> don't. And, and 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 most of the time, I don't even watch myself anymore. Like, uh, it's so easy to it's so easy to get shit now. Um, you know, before you had to sort of wait by the TV. Right. Now it's just like, I'll see it when I fucking see it. You'll, you'll pull it down somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. I got, I got Stay lots. Stay here. Get out of the way. What's, what's, that, what's Alfie doing? Over? As long as Alfie doesn't unplug us, we're good to go here. Okay. So I wanted to play this, actually, because I just think it's cool you were in this. So uh, this is just for shits and giggles. Here okay. we go. Well, I'm a lawyer, and <laughs> I assure you that it's in there. You're a lawyer. Then uh, might I ask what you're doing here? I'm a prosecutor, and uh, when you're putting away the types of guys that I do... Or gals. No, never women. It, no. It's always safest to keep a low profile, so part of that involved paying Benny and Benny in cash. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, that explains what that big old bag was for. <laughs> How do you know I have a big old bag? I didn't know. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't know anything about a bag. You guys have been in my room, haven't you? You know, I keep a lot of very highly classified documents in here. Shit's Creek. <laughs> I got to tell you, first of all, the night before I die, I'd love to do this podcast because you're fucking Sold. great already. Sold. Done. Shout um, out to Ridley Funeral Home. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be on standby. They'll literally this take your body. This fucking guy is Shout good. Shout out to Ridley Funeral Home. Jesus Christ. Um, so uh, I get the call sheet the night before. It has three names on it. Okay. Tony Napo, uh, Eugene Levy, mm-hmm. Chris Elliott. Wow. And I got to tell you, I'm 54 years old. (laughs) SCTV and Chris Elliott slash Letterman slash Get a Life, all the shit he was doing in that period. Get a Life was great, by the way. I I loved my sister, Louisa, and I Mm -hmm. used to watch it religiously. And, um,. And that was Bill Murray's dad. No, sorry, Bill Murray's brother, who's uh, playing that that old guy. Remember the 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 old the old Brian Doyle. Yeah. Yes, Brian Doyle Murray. He's great. He's great in uh, uh, Groundhog Day. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Yeah. Puxatani Phil. <laughs> All those Murrays are good. Okay. <laughs> um. So, uh, the night before, I get the call sheet, and it's those three names. Wow. That's it. Wow. You know, so I get to go to set. It's one of the only times I've ever looked at the script before I went to work. Like, I usually, I don't, I, not that I don't give a fuck. I just right. have a different process. Right. And I wanted to show up and know the lines. And first thing I said to those two in the morning was, listen, I'm going to be a pro here. And, but I just got to say, you two guys taught me what funny is. Mm. You know, I, the guy under the stairs, uh, Marlon Brando, bananas. Um, everything Chris Elliott did, Eugene Levy, every fucking thing he did. Even Cabin Boy. Look, you, got, you, you can break my balls about half my credits too, um, but uh, but uh, so it was a thrill, you know. Yeah. And after I said that, Eugene Levy's like, "I like this guy," and uh, he sat down and had lunch with me. What they a both had conversations. You know, I'm pretty good at leaving people alone, but I want I expressed that I was a fan, and they, I guess, they both recognized that and. And I let them lead, and and they were both fantastic guys, and and I, and I'm so grateful that that you know that one single day is going to go down as as an all time great memory in my career. And you can tell everybody you were on a show that won the fucking uh, Emmy for best comedy, like Shit's Creek won yeah. them all. You know, a lot of people even ha- hadn't even heard of Shit's Creek until I was on it. <laughs> That's not, I'm surprised you didn't get like a guest star Emmy uh, for that. No, I'm for just that kidding. Event. It's a wonderful show, and <laughs> and. Uh, and I was I was really proud just to be part of it. Uh, uh, it did really good stuff for Noah, who was on there, and Karen, and you know, it's a uh, it's it's a great vehicle for for a lot of Canadian talent to be sh- showcased. How come Dean McDermott? This is a tough question for you, Tony. How come <laughs> it all comes back to Dean? How come Dean McDermott didn't get asked back for season two of Pretty Hard Cases? Oh fuck! I you know I can't even uh, I can't even begin to know that for sure. Um. But uh, I can say that uh, he was cast as the partner of uh, Meredith originally, mm-hmm. and as soon as the Meredith character and and uh, and Adrian's character uh, got together, there wasn't a whole lot left for him to do. Like even in the first season, I'd see he'd be in a lot of scenes, but but they didn't give him a ton of shit to do. So I I don't know exactly what went down. You know, if, even if I did, I'd be fucking stupid to say it. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling you'd say it, though. Like, I just have a sense that if you I knew, might you say it. You know, I'm it. trying to get smarter about shit, but 
Uh, I've still got a big fucking mouth. And, and what's your character's name on Pretty Hurt? Uh, Pretty Hurt. Uh, what is it? Uh, who the fuck was oh, I? Matter, but 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 you enjoy your? Are you you're still on that show? No, I'm. I, they put me in jail. I, I I don't I don't know that they. <laughs> you know what I like about that show that I didn't like as an actor Tell to me. some extent is, and I respect the show for it immensely. Is that they really only write for the women? which every other show really only writes for the men, you know, right. the men to whatever degree are, I mean, I'm not talking about the lead specifically, but uh, they're sort of eye candy or they're the bad, they're just there to further the story. Right. But the character development is focused around the women and, and, and I even, even, and you're not even, one of them. E no, even when I'm not on the show, I have to say, I really enjoy watching it. Like it's uh, I it's think a, it's it, a good show. I think it's a good show. I think uh, I like, I love the two leads. I was, over the moon to play with Adrian because I was a fan of, you know, the Orange is the New Black and my daughter was blown away and, you know, all that shit. I mean, I'm not a star fucker at all, but <laughs> I, but I like, you know, I just did a film with Richard Gere. And Get out of here. My, yeah. my mom had the biggest crush on Richard, maybe still does. So. He's fucking awesome. And <laughs> it's not that he's fucking famous. Like there's a lot of famous people I couldn't give a fuck less about. But somebody whose work I respect that I get to play with, like same as Eugene and Chris or, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Kim Gibolo. Coates and, you know, uh, Anthony Paya and Rico. Like, uh, I've got to work Stu with a lot. Stone. <laughs> I've got to work with a lot of famous people, <laughs> but I didn't give a fuck that they were famous. I gave a fuck that they were really good and that, you know, you want to skate with Gretzky. You want to see, can I play at that level? Yes. And when I see that I can and... You know, like Joey Pants, Joe Pandliano. He recommended me after a film we did for an episode of Chucky that, that just aired. Like, he actually said to the director, this is a guy you should get for this. Like, that's... Like, and he was in Memento. He was in Memento. Um, I just love that movie. So everything. He was in a Sopranos. Yeah, of he course. In he's, fucking in. he's in a bowling risky bag, business. I think, right now. A bowling ball that's bag. That's right. Risky <laughs> business. Uh, the Matrix. Bad boys. Okay. On and on and on. I have a couple of like current projects I want to talk to you about. One that my well, one that my daughter's madly in love with, and then yes. uh, another one which is really awesome that you're on it. I think uh, one of the FOTMs, Levee Fumka, was going to join the live stream after she watched the latest episode of this, which you're on. All that's coming, but I'm going to take us back here. But before I take us back, because you know you mentioned your daughter, this ties into her. How you know you talked about you want to be like, can I skate with Wayne Gretzky? Yeah. Well, how come you live in Toronto and not L.A.? Well, honestly, there was a year, I think it was 2006, I was in Four Brothers, Saw Two, and Land of the Dead. Okay. Um, and, you know, if, you're in, if you know what the IMDB is, is the Internet Movie Database. Movie Database. And they have a rating. You have a star rating on that. I think I'm in the around 15,000s to 20,000s generally. Um, but during that period, mm -hmm. I was in the top thousand. Wow. I was like number 900 and something, meaning I was the 900 and something's most recognizable face on the planet. Wow. At that time. And that would have been when I should have went to LA. But what I did was go see a cocaine dealer oh. every couple of days. And I just kind of missed it. You know, that whole period of time. Just went by. I was doing my thing. It's a hell of a drug, though, right, Tony? That's a hell of a drug. I mean, shout out to John Gallagher and Stu Stone, a couple of my good friends yeah. uh, who tell me, Mike, don't, don't start. Don't because, ever do uh, it. Don't, don't ever start. fucking do it. If I could go back and tell young me something, yeah. I'd have six fucking houses and a cottage <sighs> and a Rolls Royce. Don't, yeah, don't, you, you can go crazy with playing that game, but... Yeah. Uh, no, no, and it's pointless. Good on you for getting, uh, getting sober, man. Well, That's uh, awesome. Listen... The, if if you can't do your job, you're fucking dead. And all I haven't fucked up in my life is my job. And I've gotten really close a bunch of times. So, you know, knock wood. I'll uh, say this, man. When I said, you know, Tony Napo's coming on Toronto Mike, uh, finally after yeah, eleven, they said uh, he probably won't show up. Yeah. Well, if most people said who's that, and then uh, <laughs> yeah. just kidding, of course. But no, everybody, uh, that's, everybody that's yeah, valid. I know, but everybody knows Tony Napo. They all to a T said. You're going to love this guy. This is a sweetheart. This is a good guy. Like, everybody was just, like, just lit up when they talked to you. Not just the Jeff Merricks and the Dean yeah. uh, McDermott's. People are cheering know. for me, and I appreciate that. And people have been kind to me and supportive and, and cut me some slack. I'm also pretty good at what I do. Yeah. But I, I think I'm a really good guy. Until you fuck with me, 
And then I'm the worst person you've ever met. Don't fuck with uh, Tony. I'm a fucking nightmare. If if I don't like you, who's the, what happened to the last person who fucked with you, and why are they now at Ridley Funeral Home? Nobody knows where they are. <laughs> Nobody's seen them in a while. Buried under BMO Field, maybe. What am I gonna fucking comment? No. <laughs> <laughs> call my lawyer. Okay, call your lawyer. Hey, hey, man, I will just let you know. Hey, what neighborhood do you live in? Because you were painting that house when you came from. Like, whereabouts do you live? Like, give me an idea. I live you know, downtown address, in the East End. Downtown in the East End. Yeah. Okay, so I not just far from. You know, I take my dog to a. No, what? So somebody who wants to kill me, they'll show up and find me. They're gonna find you tomorrow at fucking Scotiabank Theater. Like that's, that's it. right. If anybody okay. wants to kill Tony Knapp, I'm always in a dog park. Bank I'm always in tomorrow. a dog park at Power Street and uh, and uh, Richmond, and and I live not far from there. Okay, listen. If anybody has questions about that neighborhood or any Toronto real estate questions, I just want to shout out the drummer for The Watchmen. Are you a rock and roll fan? You like uh, The Watchmen? You mentioned yeah, the tragic they are. Yeah. So the drummer for The Watchmen is a guy named Sammy Cohn. He's a great real estate agent. And you can write him right now and ask him any questions about real estate. He'd love to help you out. His name is Sammy Cohn. It's Sammy.Cohn. <laughs> At properly, that threw me off in the intro. I haven't said because I wanted to say property, but it's properlyhomes.ca. Mm, clever. Cohn, remember, K O H N. Shout out to Sammy, brand new sponsor on board. Love to have him here. Sammy! Sammy Cohn, drummer for the Watchmen. <laughs> He's been drumming up results. Okay. Stick him. You, my friend, your daughter's name is Ella. Ella Ray. Ella Ray Lewis Napo is her name. Can you tell me about the uh, video, the the Rob Ford yeah, video? Yeah. I want to hear this story. I almost brought it up before. Uh, I have a friend named Ron Murphy who uh, directs a lot of Trailer Park Boys and a lot of comedy. I think to Jan Arden show as well, I believe. See how it all comes together with yeah. bandits tomorrow? It all does, actually. Uh, <laughs> he had just shot a film. Rob Ford was up for re-election. And uh, he said, I have this idea. I want to make a little video sort of against Rob Ford, basically. And the idea was a, a dad and a kid. But his original idea was there was actual crack involved somehow. and But the kid only says words taken from Rob Ford press conferences. So right. I said, "Why? I, I'm not real comfortable with my kid being in anything to do with crack. She was nine at the time. Uh, but how about if it's like a crack in a window? And he said, oh, that's brilliant. So uh, we brought her in. We we drilled the lines into her that morning, and are you going to play it? or I'm not going to play it, I, okay. but, I, but I do have the script here, but you keep going. So you can Google it. It's called Rob Ford's Words in the Mouth of a Child. She was fucking brilliant, and uh, I was okay. <laughs> Enrico's like, she really made you look bad. Like, uh, you're really overacting, and she's fucking well, You know crazy. what? I'll play it. I'll play Tony. I'm going to play it. because It's a minute. Uh, it's yeah. a minute long. Um, get out. Were you playing with the ball in here yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, because there's a new crack in the door. Did you do that? I did not do the crack. Well, I have a video that says you did. I did not do the crack, and I am not in the habit of making cracks. As for the video, I will not comment on a video that I have never seen or doesn't exist. Well, <laughs> did you throw the ball? Yes, I did. <laughs> and did the ball hit the window? Yes, it did. So you did the crack. I didn't do the crack. But you threw the ball. Dad, you're not asking me the right question. Go ahead, ask me again. OK. Did you do the crack? Exactly. No, I did not do the crack. The ball did the crack. Probably in one of my sleepy stupors. You, you, you did the crack. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I answered your question. Look, good, she's good. I made mistakes. She's so good. I'm sorry. I'm not perfect. I'm only human. It's in the past now. There's nothing I can do about it. It is what it is. I've apologized, and I think it's time to move on. <laughs> she's great. And you know what? Yeah. She's like, she's a beautiful, now she's like a beautiful 18-year-old girl, built like a brick shit house. <laughs> you know, she, if she wanted to go that way, I wouldn't get in her way. But I'm not sure that she wants to, honestly. And I, and I definitely wouldn't push her towards it, because... It's a hard industry, and it's really fucking hard on women. So, We have, uh, I'm going to save my, uh, so I have the 18-year-old I told you about, but she's actually living in Montreal right now because okay. she goes to McGill. I'm going to be visiting her later this month. Awesome. But I got a six-year-old daughter 
Oh, We're going to yeah. get to her in a minute. Oh, but yeah. I want to start with this trailer. So this is the uh, spinoff, uh, the Kim's Convenience spinoff. Okay. So after hitting the big 3-0, I needed a change, quit my gig, moved away, and started a meowsing new job in an animal shelter. Oh, my God. There she is. Shannon. Ross. Ross. Yeah, I'm going to go on break. And should Paco just finish brushing himself? Yeah. Reach for the stars, Paco. I'm excited. A place to call my own. George, what are you doing here? I live here. I'm so sorry. All the units look so much alike. Is that my mouth guard? It didn't fit. Strays. New series. September 14th on CBC and CBC Gem. All right, man. Talk to me about Strays. I fucking love Strays. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Yeah. The first season was good. It was exactly the... The show we wanted to make, but it was a bit fluffy. It was a bit light. Each each episode was self contained. They were really going for laugh, 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 laugh. This season, I think somewhere between the producers, the creators, the network, they decided, okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's um, let's go for something a little more. So now there are threads that continue the whole season. You know, it's a little more. It's less self, uh, each each episode isn't self-contained, and uh, so you need to watch it in order, which is why people make self-contained episodes, so so they don't have to. And um, and there's a couple of new characters, but the level of writing is fucking beautiful, and they're showing different sides of the, every character. The episode that played last night, episode eight... Uh, it just it it breaks my heart, and I can't be objective at all. Right. But I know when I'm on a shit show, right? And and I and I don't, I can't go on and talk. I can't bullshit. You know, I can bullshit if I'm trying to have sex with you or something, but I can't bullshit about <laughs> acting, right? <laughs> um, so I love every single person I work with, uh, from the crew to the creators to the. Anyone I've met, like it, there's just such a strong sense of family, and that really, that really manifests itself in the relationships on the show. And you know, obviously, strays is it's about the animals, but also it's about the, all the people that work there, and we're all strays and kind of fucked up, and we form a family, and that really gelled uh, last night in episode eight. And I, I think we're gonna have a hit your stride. I think we're having a pizza party at Nicole's place on Friday. To where watch. does Nicole live? I want to know. I'm no, gonna come I'm to gonna that party. Fucking tell you. I'm gonna dox Nicole um, <laughs> to watch. Maybe watch the last two episodes or just hang out. But okay, I miss those people. We've got a we've got a you know a, a text thread that we're always in touch and and uh, and you know we, we're supposed to get out and do a couple of events here and there, but. I hope it runs for five more years at least. Uh, I hope after two seasons you can get on Netflix. I think if that happens, we'll definitely find a bigger audience. Yeah. And, and that'll help well, us. Well, that's what happened for, basically, that's what happened for Schitt's Creek, right? Like that's right. They found its that's big right. American audience, and then they said, hey, this is a good show. Yeah. I think it's it's a really good show. And and people who watched it in the first season didn't love it, I'd say watch it again in the second season, and you will. I, I'll guarantee you that. If not, you can well, find me in the dog park and kick me. Well, part of these, I mean, the challenge you must have as a, you know, a Canadian working in Canada is that we like to eat our young. Like, uh, I feel like there's a sense of, like, Shit's Creek being an exception, yeah. and that was only because Americans recognized yeah. it was fucking good, and we said, oh, well, wait a minute here. Anything's only good if Americans <laughs> recognize it. <laughs> right. where, where would Ryan Gosling or Ryan anybody be without America? They'd be doing what I'm fucking doing, sitting here with you. <laughs> yeah, which by the way, there's not much, not much worse than that. Okay, so Strays, fucking great that you got a regular role on Strays. Yeah, that's great. Cool. And great. Uh, is that, Nicole's a good person. They're all good people. Nicole is fucking beautiful, and I think she's brilliant. Like she's funny and quirky and all that shit. Uh, but but she's got chops for fucking day. I, I I liken her to, I think her on this show is quite comparable to Mary Tyler Moore and the Mary Tyler Moore Wow, that's single, praise from Caesar. The single kind of quirky, wants wow. everyone to be happy, doesn't like conflict, uh, uh, you know, is, 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 is struggling with a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and succeeding uh, just not as quickly as she'd like. <laughs> I'm feeling... I think my six-year-old went to bed. I'm like, I want to get her down here. Come on, see get her down. Let's take a picture. Uh, but I'm going to give you something here real quick here, and then I'm going to get to that, which is this is a, a wireless speaker. You can take that home. You can give it to your daughter. You can keep it yourself, Tony. But right. that is courtesy of uh, Moneris. Moneris sent that uh, over to give to you, Tony, you because me? you're going to use that. 
Is that why Stu comes here? Tony. Does he just take shit <laughs> off you? Yeah, he just wants lasagna. That's beautiful. Thank you so, so much. So why the hell did Moneris give you that speaker? You're probably wondering, what does Moneris want you to do with that speaker? They want me to listen to mm. music while listen I Listen to, yes. You got to listen to music while you paint. And you got to listen to their podcast. Yes, we are open. That's a Moneris podcast okay. production. FOTM Al Grego is already in season three. They just launched season okay. three. And uh, he's been traveling the country interviewing, you know, uh, small Canadian business owners and telling their story, the That's story awesome. of their perseverance in the face of overwhelming adversity. So everybody go to yesweareopenpodcast.com and subscribe to Yes We Are Open. That's what you're going to do, buddy. Boxing! Box and you don't have to stop the music tonight. That's what it says on the box. Box and right, yeah. yeah, that's right. Now, this is exciting, okay? Because I'm going to ask you about awards. Oh, yep. don't don't hurt yourself there. Don't I've break never those won new teeth. Don't break those new teeth. What would that cost us? <laughs> a lot. I don't want to know. I can't imagine. <laughs> I um, uh, I had a root canal and I had a fucked up just one tooth, and I know what I paid to get a porcelain t- crown on one tooth. I'll tell you straight out. To get this done here cost a hundred thousand dollars. Holy shit. And you know what? An actor could afford that. It's fucking crazy because essentially it's one long day in the chair and then four or five follow ups. A thousand. How much in New Jersey? I paid 25 grand. Okay, that's a quarter of the price. Okay. But uh, no wonder you went to New Jersey. Yeah, but, uh, you know, that was a buddy, a really good buddy, doing me a huge favor. Wow. And he's, if I ever get nominated for an Oscar, he's coming okay. with me. Well, you've been nominated for shit. I'm going to name drop what yep. you've been nominated okay. for. But I uh, just want to tell people, Yes, We Are Open was nominated for Outstanding Business Series and Outstanding Branded Series by the Canadian Podcast Awards. You, my friend, you, Tony Napo, have been nominated for a Canadian Screen Award, yeah. a Broadway World Award, two Actra Awards, yeah. two Dora... Maver Moore. Maver Moore Awards. Yeah. What does all this mean? What was the Canadian Screen Award for? Canadian Screen Award was, uh, award was for an episode of uh, Rookie Blue that Steve hey. DeMarco, the late, great Steve DeMarco, directed. And uh, it was a wonderful part that, in fact, was written for me. Uh, uh, Somebody knew me and somebody knew a bit of my history. And okay. I played a guy who had uh, had a hit and run with uh, one of the main characters, uh, played by a, oh, fuck, what's his name? Peter. Wonderful actor. Peter, I want to say Mooney, but that's Tom Mooney. Mm. Peter Rooney, maybe? Uh, Google fucking. Okay, you keep talking. I'll get you the name. I think it's Peter Rooney. I think I might be right. Anyway, whoever, uh, this young. Peter Mooney. Peter Mooney. I was right. Uh, young actor, uh, fantastic fucking actor. And, you know, one of those big handsome guys who, oh, yeah. who don't always get credit for enough for the acting. That whole show, that whole cast was like supermodels. They were so fucking gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, He's from Winnipeg. Which always makes me laugh. I'm like, how can a whole fucking police force be that good looking? But, uh, but it was a good show and, and a great episode for me. And, and he was a phenomenal fucking acting partner. So th- this plot was basically... I was a part of the car accident that killed his parents and crippled his brother, played by uh, the guy who directed, uh, Peter, Peter. Peter oh. Mooney. <laughs> no, no, the, the other Peter, who directed and wrote Defendor that I was in. Peter, oh, what's his fuck? I'm terrible with names. Uh, look, Google Defender. Peter, oh, shit, I'll, I'll remember it as you say it. Okay, it is Peter Navarro. No, no. it's not. I don't know. <laughs> Stebbings? Is it Stebbings? Peter Stebbings? Wait, what's the name of this remote what? Remote Def- Defendor. Look up Defendor, Defendor with Woody Harrelson. Okay, we're wa- we're making some progress here. Stand by. This is important. Okay, I'm looking at it now. Peter Stebbings. Stebbings, I got it. See? Good for you, buddy. Call yourself a fucking host. <laughs> um Kat Dennings is in she and was. Sandra O. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of Oh, and uh what's her name? Uh, uh Orphan Black. Um Katiana. Who's Tatiana. Okay, Tatiana. So, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for the segue. So Katiana, uh, Tatiana. 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 <laughs> I knew that, by the way. Oh, there you are. Biker Cliff. Yeah. Biker Cliff. Okay. So Tatiana is She-Wolf. I'm She-Wolf. Oh, my God. What am I talking about? She-Hulk. Tatiana is She-Hulk. She's Orphan Black. Yeah. You know, she had but, like a tiny nothing part in this. She-Hulk is uh, the other show my daughter's digging these oh, days. Oh, is that right? So, and my, my wife went as She-Hulk for Halloween. <laughs> and she did. She looked amazing, actually. Well, so, Tatiana is a goddess. She's and, a goddess. And she was such a nice person. And then I bumped into her at an audition sometime after this film. And she's like, oh, I just got a series. And me thinking like, oh, good for you. Like, I'm Tony Napo. You're some little... Oh, that's Orphan Black. And she like... 
is the oh. fucking greatest actor on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and her brother, uh, Miss Lanny, Daniel, right? yeah. Daniel is on Murdoch, and he's another phenomenal wow. actor. Okay, so my daughter, this is all about Morgan now. Morgan yep. loves She Hulk, but Morgan is madly in love. And I didn't have a good clip here, but I pulled like a song yeah, just to warm it, us up here. Sure. Long intro. Yeah, okay. This is called My Year. It's the very first... It's the beginning of the very first zombie film. I know it. I've seen those films like 10, 10 20 times each. Tell me about fucking zombies because I didn't know much about zombies. I've never and then, fucked uh, a zombie. Morgan's, Morgan's loving zombies, okay? Kids on, love uh, those movies. They're phenomenal movies. Uh... Essentially, it's about zomb. The first one is about zombies and people live in this town, and there's a backstory, but it's sure. whatever. It's and like it's a high school musical with zombies. It is, but it's also sort of about integration and segregation, right? The zombies all sort of lived in zombie town. Right. They were never allowed to go to the high school. This was the first year zombies were going to go to the high school. My son Zed, played by My Milo Mannheim, who's Cameron Mannheim's son. Wow. Yeah. Fun fact. Well, Cameron and I, you know, anytime I go there now, I go to dinner, we hang out. Wow. Uh, when I was getting my teeth fixed, she let me stay at her spot in New York. She had a little pad. Milo's a great kid. Every kid in those movies is a great kid and a super talented kid. And I say kids because they were 16 when I met them, but now they're mostly 22 or 5. Um, you know, Stu Stone was a child star. I know. He's still about as tall as a child star, too. Um, so then we did a second one where there's werewolves come to town. And uh, and so now the zombies and the, and the people are friends and the werewolves are a threat and they integrate. And there was a funny moment in the third one when aliens land in the town and the director's like, okay, so there's a, there's a spaceship in the air and you're all really scared. And I'm like, well, I'm a fucking zombie and he's a werewolf. Like, how scared can we be? He's like, shut up, Tony. Just, just be scared. Um, <laughs> but I love the series. They're great. Kids love them. And I have to say, I'm on Cameo. I joined Cameo just to be accessible to kids. But I think I've done like six or seven Cameos in two years. But I've sent about 200 videos to parents whose kids are fans of the film. And, and I say, any parent who wants me to send a little video to your kid... Find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram, send me a note, and I'll always send it. Love it so much that I'm going to ask you, uh, do you want to send the, I'm going to bring down the song, actually. You want to give a message to Morgan? Morgan, your daughter? Morgan, my six-year-old daughter. Where do yeah. I look, in the camera? Uh, yeah. Hey, Morgan, uh, this is Tony Napo. Do you know who I am? I play Zed's dad, Zevon, in the zombie movies. And your dad, Mike, tells me that you're a fan of the movies. Uh, so I just wanted to say I love you. Uh, thank you for being a fan. I really hope I get to meet you, even though you're literally upstairs right now. I can't believe I missed you. Um, be good for your dad because he's the one who told me that you're a fan. He's the one who told me to say hi, and he's a really good guy. I'm really enjoying having spending some time with him. And the next time I'm by this house, which I will be, I promise we'll, uh, we'll have a little hello and we'll take some pictures and all that. Love you. How much do I owe you, Tony? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, buddy. You know that? A lasagna. That shit, like to say hi to a kid and make them smile, especially a kid who's like, oh my God, my dad knows this guy or whatever. Yeah. That's a, that's well, a perk that, you know, no money, money doesn't matter. I get to make a fucking kid smile by saying hi? Get the fuck out of here. Love it, man. No, that was fantastic. And you know what? When you'd come on the screen, I would be saying, like, at the time I hadn't met you and I didn't know you. So I was like, yeah, my friend Stu, because she knows Stu, because Stu comes was over sure, here once sure. a week during the fucking pandemic. But it's like, oh, my friend Stu knows this guy. Like, he's in my friend Stu's movies. And that was the big connect. And now I can say, oh, yeah, this is an FOTM, Tony Napo. Go. So amazing. St uh, you know, if I've said any negative shit about Stu, I meant it. <laughs> but uh, he's a solid guy. And, and I'm going to be with well, that guy. Well, we're all going to be together tomorrow, man. We're all going right. to be together tomorrow. Right. Um, looking forward. 
forward to it. We're going to take sure. a bunch of pics and make a bunch of noise so yes, people yes, will yes. sell out the whole week here. Yes. Okay, so you got the speaker. You're listening to that great Moneris podcast, but you're also going to listen to the Advantaged Investor podcast from Raymond James Canada so you, Tony, can learn how to plan invest and live smarter dude i need that guy <laughs> hook that podcast to your veins man i need that guy uh you'll hear like insights from leading professionals uh, like should i do real estate or cocaine it's like uh, <laughs> you know did you get did you ever invest in resps for your daughter i i have that's the one okay. thing that's the one thing i did do right Smart. i've done two two or three things two or three things life. right along well you seem like you're doing all right so you you, you know you pulled yourself up from and you're doing all right yeah, now yeah. so but do do subscribe, everybody, to the Advantaged Investor. Uh, you'll be uh, able to remain knowledgeable, informed, and focused on long term success. Awesome, buddy. Okay, this has all been success, amazing. Success, 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 success. Okay, so I'm just gonna drain the swamp here because we're live. I see Cam Brio is the gentleman's name. He had some questions for you. What up, Cam? Cam says. Oh, uh, well, here he's asking questions we've already answered. So I'm going to tell Cam that we did record this and it will drop in like a half an hour as an episode uh, 1143. On, but he Cam. says, how did Stu sell the role of David Stoner to you? Did he have to sell it to you or are you like you were, you were well, uh, all in? I don't think he had to sell it to me. Uh, they were like, uh, here was my, here was like an idiot. Because, you know, they had, they show that clip that we made, the garage clip. To a lot of people in the course of the film, right. including uh, whoever the fuck they were, you know, the, uh, the filmmaking people. FOTM David Kynes. Is that who it was? Yeah. I don't know. Hollywood Swedes, yeah. Yeah. So those people are in a room. They got a red light, it, green, green light, it, sorry, so they can sign yeah, off. They're in, that's right. They're yeah. in a room and they're talking. Right. And he's showing the clip. And I'm like, it's me. Anybody in the industry will know that's Tony Napo. Cause, because anyone who hasn't seen Faking a Murderer. Saw. Like so, Saw is your most your big franchise Saw. You're in a bunch of Saws. Listen, I'm in a lot of movies, sure. but, but I'm a character player. Like I'm in Saw. I get killed in Saw in fucking 10 minutes in. Uh, I come back in a couple of flashbacks in okay, other that, movies you're in a lot of that saws. are like okay. 20 seconds long. <laughs> um, four brothers I'm in, mm. but there's a lot of big Wahlberg. stars in. You're not yeah. going to walk away thinking that was Tony's movie. Right. Land of the Dead I'm in. George Romero's. Uh, John Leguizamo. Dennis Hopper. You know, there's a lot of other stars in that. Uh, there's a lot of stars, period, sure. other than me in the film. So nobody knows who the fuck I am. But me thinking in Canada... They're going to know it's me. Nobody knew. <laughs> Nobody knew. These guys right. are like, no, no, just just play the part. Just play the part. I'm like, okay, but you're going to fuck your movie up before it even comes out. See, you're, you're the perfect level of fame because, like, those who know, know. But for most people, you know, when you put on the, you put on these fake teeth, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I, like, I just shaved this morning. Uh, I looked like a homeless guy yesterday, sure. you know? <laughs> uh, it's amazing what a beard or a goatee or a Wendell Clark mustache right. just changes my oh. face entirely. It's like it a, goes back to Bedini, man. The Ballad of Wendell Clark. <laughs> That's okay. right. It's all. It's all. This is the perfect evening. All right, rapid I fire. I might die tomorrow. Actually. Well, if you died, I told you I can get you a deal. Brad Jones. I know, but was I feel like here. this. We reviewed my whole life, and now I'm going to get this in is a your car life. and crash into a fucking <laughs> yeah. truck, and it'll be at your least fault. this is recorded, man. We have something to remember. That's you right. By. Okay, so yeah. real rapid fire because Cambrio's got a lot of questions. Go, go, go. But have you ever worked with Harlan Williams? No. Okay. Uh, Although I knew a guy who said uh, he gave his girlfriend herpes or something. Wow, that's cool stuff. You know, he worked with Ed the Sock on the cable when they were at Cable Ten doing uh, okay. Ed's night party. So okay, sure they I think he's a very funny guy. I haven't yeah. seen him in a while though. Well, he was in uh, There's Something About Mary, right? He yeah, Chris yeah. Elliott. Chris Elliott is all over that movie, as I recall now. And we were talking about Chris Elliott and shit. That's Creek. right. Well, Chris Elliott in, uh, is also in um, Groundhog Day, <sighs> so which we have mentioned. We did mention uh, the Murrays. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you were a guest on Kim's. He's asking if you ever guessed it on Kim's Convenience. I did. I did one episode. He says, "Were you the sketchy tenant?" Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, ankle bracelet guy. Yeah. And what is your favorite movie of the last five years that I've seen? I would. I want to ask like that you've been in, but he's just asking that. I don't know if he wants to know. Uh, you answer. Well, I got to say, Vandits. I guess. <laughs> have you seen the final cut of Vandits? I have. Yeah. Okay. 
And if you weren't in it, would you still be recommending it? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's really, really funny. You know, we watch it in a screening room. Me, Stu, Adam, Enrico, Francesco, and Jesse. Uh, Francesco Antonio and Jesse, Jesse Camacho, Camacho sure. who are both fucking brilliant, as is Victor- Victoria Turco. Yeah. They're wonderful in the film. They're probably getting the least light shone on them because of the other names, but I think this, uh, you know, just they're all they're all accomplished and they're all fucking good. I'm so excited to see this movie tomorrow night, man. Like, I think the way to see this movie, yeah. you know, not to be too much of a jerk off, is to see it in a theater with 400 people, like. That's going to be a fucking great experience. I watch it in a screening room with five other guys and my daughter studying it to see if it worked or it didn't. Right. So there was not a lot of out loud laughing because- Look, we just came through a shitty pandemic. You can go to a theater now. So guys, everybody get your tickets to the Scotiabank Theater starting, we have the premiere tomorrow and then starting Thursday, there's like a week, no, starting Friday, there's like a week run. Uh, See- Bandits support Stu, but it's also a fun movie. It's a bunch of it's a lot of fun. A bunch of weed in that movie. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie too, so it's oh. going to be on every year for the rest of your fucking life. But you know, you could get hit by a car tomorrow, so you want to see it soon. Man, you're just warming my heart there. Okay, now I want to know if you uh, became friendly with fellow Canadian Jason Priestley when you were on Private Eyes. I really like Jason Priestley. I really liked him a lot. Uh, he's a great fucking guy. As is Cindy Sampson, or I think it's Cindy Sampson. Uh, as is, uh, anyway, though, everyone I worked with on that cast and crew and everyone was great. I did three episodes of that over the years playing Cindy's mom's, ah, fuck, I can't remember. Well, I'll give you a mind blow here while you're struggling with all the details there. Is that the, uh, the show which sadly got canceled far too soon. It was, it had people, I don't know why it got canceled. It was the number one drama in Canada for, for years. Canada, I don't know how, anyways, um, we'll get to that, but. Private Eyes canceled, but Jason Priestley was in it, and the- wonderful guy, and so good to me, and so kind to me, and and uh, I, you know, I had said something on Instagram after it was over, saying like, "This is not the greatest show in the world, but what a fucking phenomenal cast." And so, and I think the creator of the show saw it and got pissed off, and oh. I was like, "Dude, I fucking, you know, <laughs> I can't fucking say it's not the great. I didn't say the worst. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a show." <laughs> Get over yourself. I was talking about my experience on it, which was fucking amazing because they're they're all wonderful actors, and uh, I really I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to shout out the guy who wrote the book that that series was based. Yeah, on. Yeah, that's the guy. I think okay, he's, he's mad at he's me. He's an FOTM. Well, I think he's pissed off. At Gear me. Joyce is his name. Okay, I don't uh, even remember. So Gear just Gear will be listening to this because Gear listens to all well, the Toronto Mike episodes. So Gear. Let me know. Yeah. Did you get upset with Tony Napo for saying that Private Eyes was not the greatest show in the yeah, world? Yeah, he, he said something. Or, or if it's the guy I'm thinking of. Okay, because this guy wrote the book. Yeah, this is the guy who wrote the book. I okay, think. that's Gary Joyce. And he, and what he a said small something world. like, you live the, in number, a small the world. number one show in Canada, and it was good enough for William Shatner, which, I mean, I'm sure they fucking paid William Shatner more than me. <laughs> but I, I have no issue with the show. It's a good show. It's a solid show. Uh I just, I just, you know, I don't sell shit. Like, listen to me talking now. Right. Uh, I just talk. And uh, and then... You sold me on Strays, okay? Uh, I checked it out season one, and I thought it was okay. But it was okay. I, uh, I'm going back to it, because you sold me on uh, season, season two. Season two, I, and I bet you'll you'll thank me. And oh. and Gare, is Gare? Gare Joyce. Yeah. I apologize if I offended you. You know, I'm just a guy with a big fucking mouth. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I think I said a lot of nice things outside of that one... Awkward phrase. What's your favorite Stu Stone song? Uh, I don't have one. Although I, I have listened to it and I watched that whole documentary about, you know, when he was right. when he was doing that. And it's fucking brilliant. The guy's brilliant. Rolling with Saget, man. That was Stu. That's right. That's right. And the guy who did the beats for that is a guy named Decisive. He's been on the program. He's great too. Uh, uh, Derek Kristoff. Yeah. I legitimately enjoyed all of it. I legitimately enjoyed every minute of this episode of Toronto Are we done? Mike with Tony Napo. Yeah, unless you want to like blow no, my I'm mind or something done. else, no, no, because no. we got to take a photo in the fog. Yeah, and you got to get you know get some. Let sleep me just say, I'm you're fucking you great night. at this, and I look forward to coming back, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Thank you for having Can me. Can I sit on your lap during the uh, Vandits premiere tomorrow? Well, why don't you get over here and let's practice and see how it works out. And that. <laughs> Good night, everybody! Oh! Play. This song here, there's in a podcast. You know Ron... Uh, Ron Hawkins. Ron Hawkins does that Tuesday Nights with Tom? 
Yeah. yeah, he did during the pandemic. Yeah, during the pandemic, I bu- I wrote in one time and he said, uh, uh, um, "What's the line?" I want to take a streetcar downtown. Yeah, read Henry Miller and wander around. Yeah, it says I want. He sang to the camera. I want to take a streetcar downtown. I slap Tony Napo and wander around. Okay, he performed at one of my events. I've had I have my eleventh event coming up at Palma's Kitchen on December third at noon. Ron Hawkins and uh, I have a Ron Hawkins painting okay. above my couch. Yeah, he's got. You know what? I just saw him at the El Macombo uh, one week ago. I, I, I see I've him all the time. Never seen them live. I have tickets to see Louis Alou for at Lee's Palace the the night of TMLX eleven, which is uh, December third. I'm going to be at Lee's Palace seeing those guys. I love those. Take me, guys. take me. I will take you. Okay. I'll let you sit on my lap for that show. <laughs> but anyway, he's at my event and he's singing Rosie and Gray because I close every episode of Toronto Mike with this song. That's awesome. And he goes. I want. He sings it. I want to take a streetcar downtown, listen to Toronto Mike and wander around. Uh, and then instead of drinking Guinness from a tin, he goes, drink some Great Lakes from a tin. Uh, like he's just a. He's a, a fucking awesome guy. I gotta say. And that brings us to the end of our one thousand one hundred and forty third show. I'm never cutting your mic, Tony. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Toronto Mike. Hey, Tony, you don't tweet much, yeah? I tag you like a mofo. Yeah, no, There's I, nothing from you. I don't go on Twitter anymore. I hate it. So should I... Okay, well, how do you want people... Instagram, to- I'm Napo, period, Tony, and Facebook, you know, whatever. Who cares? Our friends at Great Lakes Brewery are at Great Lakes Beer. Palma Pasta's at Palma Pasta. Don't leave here without your lasagna, Tony. I'm not gonna. Dicker U is at take Sticker extra. U. <laughs> Moneris is at Moneris. Raymond James Canada are at Raymond's, Raymond James CDN. Recycle My Electronics are at EPRA underscore Canada. Ridley Funeral Home are at Ridley FH. And Canna Cabana are at Canna Cabana underscore. See you all tomorrow when Mark Weisblot from 1236 returns. is the best that I can Maybe I'm not and maybe I am But who gives a damn because everything is coming up rosy and green Yeah, the wind is cold but the smell of snow warms me today And your smile is fine and it's just like mine I better not name